So I'm here at IMTS with my buddy Paul and we're at the FANUC booth. I think it's one of the ways that I think manufacturers can recoup a lot of the money that they lose through trial and error and trying something out. And you've got a great wall of selections here. So let's, let's go over that, shall we? Okay. So Paul, what's the first station here about? So the, the first software here is called Toolpath Optimizer. Um, just about everybody uses CAD CAM. Yep. So you, you have a CAD model of this is what I wanna make. You output code using CAM of how am I gonna make it. Sometimes the code is not truly accurate to the CAD model. Yeah. So what Toolpath Optimizer does is you feed into it your CAD model, you yeah. feed into it the code you already have. Okay. It will look at it and it will modify the G-code as need be to make the command points much closer to oh, the actual CAD model. Perfect, so what's the next section we're looking at here? All right, so this is CNC Reflection Studio. It's machine modeling. So you you can, it has a built-in G-code, FANUC G-code parser. Yeah. And there's, there's multiple ways to use this, but the number one, I think, important feature is collision checking. Okay. Uh, the, the machine models that are in it are built on CAD. So you can either create your own machines you can use the supplied machines. There are several. Um, even if you don't even have to get fancy, yeah. if you just put the kinematics of what it is you are trying to simulate, that will work too. But you can load into it your tools, your workpiece, your program, and see this is how it will actually operate when I run the program. It can be connected directly to a CNC, a CNC simulator. But then I don't have to worry about my machine is catching it and hitting that e-stop fast enough because I'm going to run it through this first. Right. I'm going to avoid crashing my machine. Yep. I'm going to save myself tooling costs, fixture costs, setup costs. Maybe I can set up a little more fast, a little faster, a little more aggressively because I've already proven it out in the software. Right. Well, that's a fantastic support on the digital solutions side. What's the, the next option? Here? So next up is CNC Guide 2, which is our CNC simulator. Okay. So uh, basically, if our real CNC operates in, in a certain way, this is how CNC Guide 2 is going to operate because we use basically the same software internally. Okay. Uh, servo model allows you to model the actual servo system itself. So the servo parameters yep. as well as the, the real servo characteristics of your machine tool. You have to do some work to actually capture data but the actual position output from CNC Guide 2, if you have the servo characteristics captured, will be true to life of what the real machine would do when you command it to do. So it's based on actual physical feedback, like what the way it would feedback normally in person. It's not some digital pipe dream, best case scenario. I mean, I know I've had situations, I'm sure people out there have had situations where it's like, oh, simulation said it was good and they go in and they shear an end mill or they chuck a part or they do something crazy. This Correct. sounds like it's based on more actual results. So it you'll is. See. Yep, you capture the frequency response of the x-axis. Yep. When we run the x-axis, the, the output will take all of that into account. Perfect. All right, finally, well, not finally, but uh, close to, it can work with CNC Guide 2 or it can work with a real CNC. Okay. Uh, is surface estimation. And what this does, especially with CNC Guide 2 and that servo characteristics that we talked about, yep. when you capture the position output from CNC Guide 2 or the real machine, uh, we will model how the actual surface finish will look quite so, accurately. So that blue stuff, that discoloration means you're gonna have a little bit marred finish or something. Yep, so what we're, what we're showing uh, between these two is on, the, on this side, we have a, a little bit of error compared to our CAD file. Yep. And on the right side, uh, we have tuned it and we are machining exactly what we intended to output. But oh. you, can, you can also look for, you can zoom in and look at the surface yep. and see the tool marks. That is really high level stuff. This is stuff that they used to say, it's like it's a little bit of magic, it's a little bit of voodoo, it's a little bit of something special. It looks like you found a solution on the software side that's really gonna help support people and figure out what's going on instead of just, oh, only Bobby can run it and he's off for two weeks. Correct, and if, if you're not happy with how it looks, if you're getting your output from CNC Guide 2, yeah. you can go make some changes, test it very quickly, 
and either be happy or keep working without yeah. doing it on the real machine. So we, we've got Smart Digital Twin Manager and it will allow you to feed into it all the files you have captured from surface estimation yeah. and then do easily, easily compare between these different files pick and choose which ones you like, which yeah. ones you don't, mark them as good, mark them as bad, put some notes in, huh. uh, and I'll, I'll allow you to compare them side by side and basically develop some notes on, I like it, I don't like it, that, manage it. That's fantastic. So yes, you're generating a ton of digital assets. We've all got giant hard drives now. Now there's also a way to store it so you can make references, know what worked, know what didn't work. So right. if that new guy starts up and he's like, oh, we should try this, you'll know right away. Yeah, no, we've already tried that and it was not a good result. Right. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Bob. Thanks, Arthur.